Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. This is your favorite Inday, your nurse in charge. And in this video, we are going to talk about the introduction of nursing research. But before we're going to start, please don't forget to click like, comment, and subscribe on my channel, especially if you are new. So, let's start after the intro! <laughs> exactly research means it means that we are going to look again for something those things that are existing but needs evidences for innovation or as new knowledge it is a systematic inquiry that use discipline method to answer questions or solve a problem the thing is, we have a goal here. We are not just doing research. We are not just checking some evidences. But we have a goal. That is to develop, to refine, and to expand the body of knowledge. Since we are nurses, we are actually doing nursing research. Number one purpose is to develop knowledge about health and promotions of health over full lifespan. That is care for persons with problems and disabilities. So in this thing, we are actually doing nursing research to enhance the knowledge and to improve the promotion of health, especially in the nursing side. Moreover, in doing the nursing research, we are making a tool to prove the value of nursing in the society. Actually, this is not just a tool that professional nurse needs to obtain knowledge and information to make a daily practice, but it is also a tool to prove the value of nursing in the society. Actually, there are a lot of researches already that is being used currently for the nursing practice. It is being used clinically and even in the administrative side. Without research, there will be no growth of nursing or advancement of nursing as a profession. Because since the beginning, we have a lot of researchers already which improve or there was a growth of nursing in the history. There are a lot of methods in acquiring the knowledge in nursing. Actually, we have two. We have the unstructured and the structured. In the unstructured area, we have here the tradition, the authority, the intuition, experience, trial, and error. So if you can see, in unstructured, there is no specific path. But for the structured area, we have here a lot of things. The number one here, or the first two here, are the inductive and deductive reasoning, wherein we use logic okay remember the word logic if you cannot see something in the exam for example you cannot see anything that talks about reasoning for example there is no inductive or there is no deductive there use the word logic okay that is one method in acquiring knowledge in nursing number three is the assembled information four is problem solving and the last one is scientific method so if you're going to compare the unstructured and structured here in the structured there is a specific path that you are using in order for you to acquire something in order for you to acquire knowledge or some evidences in nursing okay the next one is variables. We need to define first these things in order for us to know the overall introduction of nursing research. Number one that we need to define is variable. What is exactly variable? This is anything that can take on differing or varying values. We have actually three. Number one is the independent, number two dependent, and the number three is the intervening. These first two here, the independent and dependent, are actually always going together. And it's already familiar to everyone I know. If you will say independent, they are always the presumed cause. What I mean here is that this variable influences the dependent variable because in the dependent variable, this is the presumed effect or the primary interest. Okay, remember that the primary interest, the thing that you are always seeking, okay, the primary interest, that is the dependent variable. And the third one is the intervening or we say in between factors. Here in the intervening, it surfaces the time, the independent variable that starts operating to influence the dependent variable. Okay, you got it? So independent, that is the cause, dependent, that is the effect, and the intervening is the in-between or the variable that starts operating to influence the dependent variable. 
So if we are going to say research, it is not as easy as you think. There are a lot of terms to understand and classifications or types that we need to inculcate in our minds in order for us to have a good research. And it is classified based on approach or based on purpose. Here in based on approaches, we need to understand the differences of mix, quantitative, and qualitative approaches of research. Here in quantitative researches, we need to understand the two types here. We need to understand the differences between the experimental or non-experimental researches. And here in experimental researches, there are three types. True experimental, quasi-experimental, and pre-experimental. All the descriptions will be mentioned later on or, or it will be explained on the next slides. Meanwhile, on non-experimental, we are going to understand the differences among descriptive, correlation, development, and survey. Of course, here in mixed, we also need to understand the differences amongst convergent, explanatory, exploratory, and embedded. Meanwhile, in qualitative, we need to know if our research is phenomenological, grounded, ethnographical, historical, case studies, or action researches. And here in based on purpose, we need to know if the research that we are doing is just a basic research or it's an applied research. So this is actually the overview of research and it's already simplified it for you. So don't tell me that you did not understand where does this qualitative branch out or where does this quasi-experimental branch out. So it's already here. I already branched it for you. So if you will say research, we need to classify our research. Is it an approach or it's just a purpose? And we need to understand the differences amongst mixed, qualitative, and quantitative in order for us to know what design or what methodology we are going to use soon if we are going to collect our data. Okay, you got it? Now, we need to understand first what is approach because we mentioned here based on approach and here in based on approach, it seems like 75% of the whole research. Okay, so what is exactly an approach? An approach means a whole design including the assumptions, the process of inquiry, the type of data collected, and measuring of findings. So here in approach, we are going to understand the assumptions, the inquiry that we are taking, the data that we are collecting, and how are we going to measure those things that we already collected. So here in the approach of research, we are going to understand the quantitative first. It is concerned with discovering facts about social phenomena in numerical investigation. Remember the word numerical and it is based on measurement. We are going to test our research later on based on objectivity, validity, accuracy, and precisions. And here in quantitative approach also, we are going to analyze through numerical comparison and statistical inferences. Remember the word numerical and statistical. So we will going to understand how do quantitative approach works. The thing here in the quantitative approach, we have two types. That is the experimental and non-experimental. Here in experimental quantitative approach, we need to know the differences of manipulation, randomization, and control because they are significant or they are contributing in the experimental approach. So number one is manipulation. Here in the manipulation, we always have variables. I mentioned earlier the independent and dependent variables. So here in the manipulation, we are actually looking for the cause and effect. So an example here in the manipulation is that if sickle cell anemia patient comes to ER, they are screaming for pain. You are going to give painkillers for this patient. And in this example, the painkiller is our independent variable. Meanwhile, the patient who is screaming or in pain is our dependent variable because we are going to gauge the effect of that painkiller that you gave to the patient. Okay? So the thing here is that the manipulation that we did here, you gave painkiller to the patient. So you already manipulated the level of pain because you gave something to the patient. You got what I mean? 
Okay, next one is the randomization. Here in randomization, there is a sudden selection without plan from the group or from the population. You are doing a randomized the randomization of samples. And here in the randomization, we have a lot of terms also. But since we are just tackling for the overview, I will not going to explain it now. I'm going to explain it on the next video. Okay, so here in randomization, there is a sudden selection of population already. You are already selected selecting the group that you are going to study. Meanwhile, here in the control, there is a certain group that you are going to exclude in order for you to check if your research is doing great or if, if your research is valid, okay, of its or it's true, okay? You get what I mean? So here in the experimental research, we need to understand the manipulation, the randomization, and control in order for us to understand also the true experimental, quasi, and experimental. As I've mentioned earlier, there are three types of experimental research. These are true experimental, quasi-experimental, and pre-experimental. And here, in true experimental, the manipulation, randomization, and control are all present. That means that there are independent and dependent variable. There is a randomization of population, and there is a control group. If these three are present, there is a true experimental research, okay? The next one is the quasi. Quasi-experimental research is that there is always manipulation. However, either the randomization or control is present, okay? So one of them is present. There is like an experiment, but it doesn't possess experimental control or randomization. So just remember here in quasi, we have the manipulation, but either or we don't have the randomization or control. And the last one is the pre-experimental. Here in the pre-experimental, we only need to think of the manipulation because we don't have a randomization and we don't have control also. So in this pre-experimental, it seems like you are still in the beginning of your research. Either way, you're going to continue it as a true experimental or your quasi-experimental. But while you are preparing your research and while you are thinking of methods that you are going to use, we can categorize that research as pre-experimental. And the next one is the non-experimental. We are going to meet the descriptive, correlational, developmental, and survey. So how does non-experimental works? In this research, the researcher will examine things that happens naturally by observing things in natural setting. There is no manipulation here and there is no control also. Here we have four types. Number one is the descriptive research design, wherein the researcher will going to observe, will going to document, and will go going to describe. These three things will be done by the researcher. Always remember that there is no manipulation and there is no control. So for example, so a researcher will going to know the back pain of nurses in the ICU. The researcher will just going to observe and describe the severity of the pain by not giving any medication. We mentioned earlier that in manipulation, you are going to give something. Unfortunately, here in the descriptive, we are not going to use manipulation. So that researcher will just going to observe, will just going to document whatever he will going to see from the nurses in the ICU who are are actually suffering from back pain. The next one is the correlational. Here in the correlational, there is an interrelationship among variables of interest without any active intervention. There is always a relationship between two things here. And the researcher is going to examine the cost and effect. I mentioned earlier interrelationship among variables. So we are going to note if there is a cost or there is an effect without giving any intervention, without any actions. So an example here is that you are going to study the relationship of the smoking lifestyle with a lung cancer disease. You are going to check the connection of the cause, which is the smoking, and the effect, which is the lung cancer. Clear? Okay. Next one is the developmental. Here in the developmental non-experimental research is that the researcher is examining a thing about a particular time. Remember the word particular time because in this developmental, time is important here. So an example here is that a researcher will going to study the perception of nursing students in nursing profession during COVID season. So our particular time here is that during the COVID season. On. And the thing that we are examining here is the perception of nursing students in nursing profession. 
Okay, next one is survey. The last type of non-experimental research is the survey research design, wherein the researcher is going to collect information or view from the subject regarding opinion, perception, or data from a subject. We are going to collect information in numerical way. The other topics here will be discussed on the next video. Mm -hmm.